Hello, my name's Mark Rylands. I'm an actor and I'm, you may know my voice because I'm friends with two characters that you may have met on the television and in films. One of those friends is a character called Flop, a wonderful little fella I know who's in a TV show called uh, Bing Bunny on on um on the BBC, one of the BBC channels. And he's a friend of mine. And sometimes I get to act him and pretend to be him. Uh, you know, I expect you pretend to be people at certain times to amuse yourself or amuse other people. And the other person that uh, you may have you may recognize my voice or know me a little bit from my look is a character called the BFG, the Big Friendly Giant. And he's also a friend of mine, and I got to uh, pretend to be him, and they gave me big, big ears like this, and uh, did other things to my face uh, to, so that I would look a little bit more like him. And anyway, they're both very well, and uh, they send their best wishes to you. But I'm here today because I wanted to share two stories that have been given to me to, to uh, share with you. And I love these stories. They're by two groups of people called the Blue Group and the Green Group. And they're odd stories. They're not like uh, the stories that you usually hear. They remind me more of the kind of stories that I encounter in my dreams. And I wonder if you'll share that impression with me when you hear the stories, that they seem more like the kind of stories that happen when we're sleeping and dreaming. No one really knows where those stories come from or what they're about, but they're very personal to us, aren't they? Anyway, the first story in, involves a, a character I've always loved, the, the character of Spider-Man. Do you know who Spider-Man is? Well, for some reason or other, I can't remember. He has, he's a man, but he has all the abilities that a spider has. So he can fly through the air and he can make webs, and he's very strong. Spiders, though they're very small, are very strong. But he chooses to help people in the society, as far as I know. I think they think he's not a good character, but he's actually a very helpful character. Anyway, this is a story by the Blue Group called Spider-Man and the Dinosaurs. And it goes like this. So one day there were two friends, two friends, and they decided to go into the forest. So they decided to leave their home or the town and go out into the forest the wilderness. Uh, and when they were there, they saw lots and lots of trees, and in, it was actually more of a jungle than a forest. So that's a very, very dense forest that uh, is very far away from from cities and streets and all the places that, that uh, you may know more familiarly. A uh, very old place, the jungle, with lots of wild animal, animals. Anyway, what they find in this jungle are, are dinosaurs. Now, I expect you know what dinosaurs are. They lived a long, long time ago on the planet, and for some mysterious reason, they all they all um, perished uh, at the same time. But they were huge. You can see them in museums, can't you? You can see them reconstructed, uh, some of their bones, and put together there. Anyway, these two friends, they go into the forest, and it turns out to be a jungle. So it's a tangled, tangled a uh, very, very busy place with lots and lots of butterflies and animals and things like this. And it's actually so old that, the, uh, that there are dinosaurs there. And the dinosaurs are busy eating. Uh, so they're not dangerous dinosaurs. Uh, they're busy eating plants. Most of the dinosaurs, I think, were vegetarians. But I'm not absolutely sure about that. Anyway, suddenly there's a very loud bang and a flash of light. Uh, in, in this jungle. And then they see monkeys and a giraffe, but they don't say what the monkeys and the giraffes are doing. Giraffes in a jungle is unusual, I think. I've seen them on nature programs, and they're usually out on the plain, aren't they? So they've all come into the jungle as well. And then the, the two friends, they looked up in the sky, and they saw that rain was starting to come down, and some lightning. Uh, and most jungles are Rain is a very important thing. It's important for all plants, isn't it, in your garden and for big trees and 
So some of these jungles in South America are called rainforests because it almost rains all the time inside them. Uh, and they're very important, actually, for the health of the planet. They're a bit like the people describe them as the lungs, like our own lungs uh, in our own bodies. So if the planet had a body, the rainforest is, is their lungs. It's where a lot of oxygen is created for the Earth. So these two friends are in this uh, in this forest, and they see rain coming down, and they see this lightning as well. And now they see that there are owls, owls in the trees. So this is very curious. Uh, owls make me think more of England and um, and winter time. And but owls are a very very old uh, animal, and they they're often associated with with wisdom, with with ability of human beings to think in a very wise uh, way, which is, in my mind, thinking that's full of love and kindness. Anyway, they have these owls there in the trees. So the forest is getting more and more, as they're in the forest, they're seeing more and more animals around them, aren't they? And then they see something flying in the sky. Now, you'd expect that this would be Tarzan, wouldn't you? Because Tarzan lived in a jungle, or I, that's what I know. And he, he hung from ropes and swung. But it's not Tarzan, it's Spider-Man. Spider-Man is in the jungle and he's flying about in the sky. This is a very strange story, isn't it? Where's this going? Then one of the dinosaurs comes towards them. And, and, and Spider-Man puts a huge web around the dinosaur. And that's a huge web, isn't it? And we have to be very strong. Because dinosaurs are so large, they're very, very strong. Most animals, are, as they get larger, are pretty strong. You have to be careful around them. Even large dogs, you have to be careful, aren't they? They can be very strong. And you see sometimes a large dog pulling someone down the street, don't you? Because it, it wants to get to the, to the park or get to another dog. Uh, anyway, so a dinosaur is very strong. And this, this uh, Spider-Man throws a web around the dinosaur, and the dinosaur is stuck, stuck in place. If you've ever seen a little fly get caught in a web, webs are very sticky. Uh, they're designed to catch other insects because that's what the spiders like to eat for their lunch, their breakfast and their dinner as well. Someone, though, comes to rescue the dinosaur, and the storyteller doesn't quite know who that someone is. But in a quick flash of this lightning that's happening in the forest, uh, they see that it's a genie. Now, what's a genie? I, in my memory, a genie is something that you find in a bottle. And you, you find a little bottle and you rub the side of the bottle and a genie appears and sometimes you get three wishes from the genie. So this genie has come and in a flash has saved the dinosaur. And the genie says, what do you wish? That's the classic thing that genies say to you, isn't it? What do you wish? And the friends say, that they would wish very much to go home and they'd like to keep this dinosaur as a pet in their garden. What a great wish. I hope they have a big garden, don't you? Or some ability to shrink the dinosaur. Because otherwise that dinosaur is, that dinosaur is going to be a very big thing to have inside the garden. It might step on the house. It's certainly going to step in the vegetable patch. It's going to step everywhere. Um, Maybe maybe there's something they know about dinosaurs we don't know. Anyway, what does the genie says say? The genie says the same things. Genie all genies always say, "Your wish is my command." And that's the end of that story. Spider-Man and the dinosaurs. Isn't that quite like a dream? The second story uh, is is not by the Blue Group but it's by a group called the Green Group. Um, and I don't know what the difference between the Blue Group and the Green Group is, other than they like to, they, one of them likes the name Blue Group and the other one likes the name Green Group. Uh, blue makes me think of the sky and makes me think of the sea and makes me think of people with lovely blue eyes. And green makes me think of plants and uh, forests and fields. I wonder what they make you think of. Anyway, this is by the Green Group, and this is a different story, though there's something similar uh, in, again, that it's, it's two friends. Two friends. It's good to have friends, isn't it?
two friends. So it's not it's not someone setting off on their own. It's someone and a friend setting off, and in this case, on an adventure. And the adventure is called The Tiger Who Wanted to Dance. The Tiger Who Wanted to Dance. What does that make you think of? makes me think a bit of circuses, but I don't remember ever seeing a tiger dancing. To be honest with you, it's a little bit upsetting when when you see um you can see pictures of people making bears dance and it's it's pretty cruel I think, isn't it? Even to make a cat dance or a mouse dance or a dog dance isn't a very nice thing to do. Um I've seen cats and dogs jump about and be very happy. I don't know, dancing is a little bit maybe of an imposition. But in this case, this is a tiger who wanted to dance. That's the title of the story. So that's quite different, isn't it? Any, anyway, one day, two friends, they set off on an adventure. An adventure. It's fun to have adventures, isn't it? You can have them in your imagination. And these, these stories are so like dreams, where certainly if you're like me, I have loads of adventures in my dreams. Great adventures. Sometimes I wake up and I'm not sure if they were real or not. They seem so real. These two friends, they go again to the forest. So both of these stories are about going out into the forest. What a curious place, the forest. So they set off to the forest and they see a monkey and a zebra and an elephant. A monkey and a zebra and an elephant. Curious three animals to see. Monkeys are natural in forests, something, because they love to climb up in trees, and they, I think they can escape from animals that might want to eat them by hiding in the trees. Though sometimes they come on the ground as well from programs I've seen. Zebras and elephants, again, I see them more out when I see nature programs. Don't you agree that they're more out on the, on the plains? Zebras are like horses with stripes, aren't they? And they like to run and they like to be on flat places. I don't I don't remember seeing many pictures of zebras in the forests. Though you would think that their stripy coat might give them protection and might be good camouflage in the forest. Anyway, these zebras and then the elephants, I've seen elephants move wherever they want to really. They're a very, very old and wonderful animal, aren't they? What's the thing people say about animal uh, elephants? That an elephant never forgets. If you have a friend who never forgets things, then he may have some or she may have some part of an elephant's spirit. Huh? <laughs> so they go in and they see a monkey, a zebra, and an elephant. And then they want to buy food at the grocery stop shop. <laughs> they want to buy food at the grocery shop. Well, you're not going to find a grocery shop in any forest I know. Uh, but anyway... They do. There's a grocery shop. That's the wonderful thing about dreams. They don't have to make sense in the way that, you know, all the time at school and in the world and stuff. Not always with all teachers, but often we have to make sense, don't we? That doesn't make sense, someone tells you, and you feel, oh, oh I better make sense. But not in dreams. Uh, and in this story, they want to buy food at the grocery shop. And so, lo and behold, uh, there's a grocery shop there. And then there's a tiger outside the grocery shop. And what's the tr tiger trying to do? That's right. It's trying to dance. There's a tiger outside the grocery shop trying to dance. That's extraordinary, isn't it? If you or I saw a tiger outside the grocery shop, I, I'd be pretty careful. I'd stand very still or I'd try and move away very carefully because tigers are very, very uh, strong predators, aren't they? Um, they don't always attack people. Um, it's pretty rare that they attack people, but you've got to be very careful with a tiger. They're very, 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 very large claws, don't they? With large, um, sharp claws and big teeth. And they can, if they, if they don't like you or they feel threatened by you, then they, then they could be very dangerous. Anyway, this tiger isn't dangerous at all. On the contrary, it's trying to dance outside the, um, the grocery shop. <laughs> and so these two friends, they decide to teach the tiger how to dance. They go over and they say to the tiger, we notice that you're trying to dance. I don't know what dance it is. Do you think the tiger's tap dancing? Maybe it's waltzing. Maybe it's doing a tango. Tiger and tango, the tiger tango, that sounds quite possible, doesn't it? I think it might be doing a tango, but maybe you 
can see that it's doing something else. Anyway, these friends seem to know enough about dancing that they're able to teach the tiger how to dance. That's a great result, isn't it? Imagine if you came upon a tiger that wanted to dance and you didn't know any dancers. Now, that wouldn't be so good. You wouldn't have the opportunity to become friends with a tiger, which if that happened in my life, that would be one of the top things of my life. And these two friends, they're lucky enough to know how to teach the tiger to dance. And so the tiger becomes their friend. And the tiger then says to them, would you like to come back to my place and see where I live, where all the tigers live, which is a very nice thing of a tiger to do. Uh, I don't know. I've never heard of any tigers be welcoming you back to their secret place. Because to be honest with you at the moment, uh, tigers have to be very, very careful, don't they? There are so many species of animals that, that are in great trouble because there are so many human beings and a lot of human beings don't don't love animals, do they? They very can be very cruel to animals, and uh, there are many many animals that are in trouble and need help at the moment. But this this tiger is is very friendly and invites them to come back to where the tigers live. And where do you think the tiger lives? In a tree? Yeah, some tigers do live in a tree by the ocean. I have seen pictures of tigers living by the ocean. Um, on the top of a mountain or rocks, sometimes like like cats in the house. If if you have a cat and a dog that live together, the cat often likes to stay up on the shelf, doesn't it, or sit up high where the dog can't get it. And yes, tigers and big predatory cats they can be high up, so they can jump down and run away. This tiger though takes the two friends to a cave. It's a cave where he lives, this tiger or she lives. I'm not quite sure if it's a she or a he. Maybe you can see that better than me. And when they get into the cave, after looking around and saying to the tiger, this is a lovely cave you have, um, they, they have a feeling that something's not quite right. Something's not quite right in the cave. Something's wrong. And they just have a feeling that something is missing. I don't know how they get this feeling. Maybe they see the tiger as a little bit agitated and looking around and with its paw it's lifting things up and sniffing under things and it look it's looking all over the place for something something's missing from the cave eventually the tiger says oh no it's my diamond my diamond is gone and so the tiger had a diamond in its cave and the diamond was gone Tiger's not very happy about this. Uh, a diamond is a very rare thing, isn't it? It's a very, very takes a long time to create a diamond. <clears throat> they they form, as far as I know, in very hard rock called granite, and they're very precious. So people will pay a lot of a lot of money for them. And uh, when there's a special occasion. If someone wants to show that they love someone else very much, they'll spend quite a bit of money and buy them a diamond, a diamond ring or diamond earrings. Diamonds are also very hard. They're used to uh, cut things. Um, they can men can make very sharp blades out of diamonds, so they're very precious. If, if you're trying to cut through something that's very hard, so it's an interesting thing to have for a tiger to have. I've never heard of a tiger having a diamond. Um, I wonder what the tiger would would have the diamond for. What would the tiger need to cut? Or maybe the diamond was given to the tiger. Sometimes I know people who inherit diamonds uh, when their grandparents die or when friends die, uh, which is very sad. Uh, it will be given to them as a memory. Um, you, I bet if you ask your mom or dad or ask some older people, they may well have a, um, a a diamond that was that was given to them. Hold on just a minute. I've just got to do something here with the computer, which is acting funny. There we go. Now we're back again. Anyway, where were we? Oh, yeah, the diamond. Uh, the tiger says, oh, no, my diamond is gone. And where was the diamond? It was in the shop. I don't know how they knew this, but they knew that it was in the shop. So they went back to that shop in the middle of the forest, and you know what they did? They tore the whole shop to pieces. 
and they got the diamond back. Now, I don't know who did it, and if I did know, I wouldn't tell you. I wouldn't tell you because the police might be watching or something, and I think this diamond and these, this tiger and these friends have got a very special friendship, so I wouldn't want them to get in trouble. Mind you, it's a pretty violent thing to tear a shop to pieces, so I don't know. But, you know, with dreams, dreams, what's interesting about them, they're not always... Uh, they, they there's not always a clear good and bad in dreams they're kind of they're kind of beyond that aren't they um when you wake up nothing if nothing nothing's no one's really died or nothing's really happened so dreams are a place where our imagination can experience all kinds of things i suppose a bit like going to the cinema or going to the theater or or telling any story stories don't have to be completely real Anyway, they tore this whole shop up and they got the diamond back and then the storytellers tell us they took everything else too from the shop. What a strange story. That's the end of that story. That's a wonderful story, isn't it? What do you think? Do you think they were bad to do that? Or good? Does it matter? I mean, the thing I get from the story is if you find a diamond in a cave, <laughs> don't take it, because <laughs> it, it might belong to a tiger, and the tiger might have friends who will help that tiger find out where the diamond is, and then the tiger's not going to be very pleased at all. Uh, and even though it's a grocery shop, which everyone needs and isn't necessarily a bad place, uh, that tiger's going to tear it all up, and he's going to take everything else as well, everything in the shop which uh, is not a good result, is it? So anyway, that's the story of the tiger who wanted to dance by the Green Group. Thank you very much, Green Group. That's a great story. And the other story was the story by the Blue Group. Do you remember it? Spider-Man and the Dinosaurs. Spider-Man and the Dinosaurs. So those are the two stories. And uh, I'm, I'm sending this out to you via... Uh, lovely group called Speech Bubble uh, that I, I think are a wonderful group and I'm also going to send them to Flop by the way and, the, and I think Flop might read them to Bing Bunny and see what Bing Bunny says and um, I might also send them off to my friend BFG uh, who lives up in the mountains in the hills and see what those two think of these stories. Anyway, all the best to you and um, I hope you have lots of good dreams and lots of exciting adventures, and you always have a friend to go with you and have an adventure. And when you come upon a tiger who's trying to learn how to dance, I hope you have a good dance that you're able to teach that tiger. All right. Cheerio.